Roto Grinders Daily Fantasy Football Podcasts are presented by Yahoo Sports Daily Fantasy. Be sure to check out Yahoo this Sunday for another million dollar baller contest for week 17. This is a $20 entry, 10 entry max tournament, and once again, Yahoo is guaranteeing a quarter million in overlay for this contest. It's the best value in all of DFS, so be sure to check them out this Sunday and use promo code GRINDERS30 for a $30 matching bonus on that first deposit. If you are playing DFS this week 17, give them a look. That's Yahoo Sports Daily Fantasy. What's going on guys? Welcome back to part two of the DFS OGs podcast right here on rotogrinders.com breaking down the rest of the week 17 games that we have not covered yet. If you missed part one, we covered all the one o'clock games, all our thoughts there. And here in part two, we'll break down the remaining nine games here in the last week of the regular season. I will focus on teams that still have a lot to play for. You know, maybe some teams that are going to look at some of their younger guys. So we'll look at it from all angles here. But let me bring in my co-host here, Notorious and Head Chopper. Boys, how we doing? We ready for this part two here, week 17. Chop. I'm ready. I'm ready for part two, ready to wind down week 17. And then next week we'll get some real football in there where guys are actually trying. And then uh, maybe at the end here, I can tell you how my toilet bowl went in my season. Long. All right. We're looking forward to that. Of course, Derek, how we doing, brother? Yeah, doing good. Uh, nothing better than playoff football. So I'm excited for that, but I will be missing these full slates. Uh, you know, once we get into the playoffs, it's a little harder to get contrarian, uh, but yeah, it should be fun. Yeah, and we'll see. Maybe we can pull together a, a playoff OGs podcast. We'll, we'll talk to the suits and see what they want to do. But for now, we'll break down the rest of these Week 17 games. We'll start in Seattle. We have Arizona and Seattle. Seattle, huge favorites here at home. They're, they're kind of locked into their spot. They can move around a little bit, but not big movement here for Seattle. So, to me, this is a spot I want to play the defense. I want to play some Chris Carson. That's about it. I don't even know that I want to go to Russell Wilson and the boys who are playing well. So, Derek, we'll get started with you. Thoughts there? Running game, passing game, or you want to load up on Seattle in this one? Yeah, I mean, I think I'll just wait and see what is said throughout the rest of the week. But assuming that, you know, everyone's going to play since they do still have a little bit to play for, it, it's probably going to be a Carson and a Seattle defense, like you mentioned. Uh, huge favorites, 13 and a half right now uh, at home against the turnover prone Josh Rosen, uh, who's just been – you know, a great quarterback to stream opposing defenses against. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm looking at here and uh, don't have any interest in the Arizona side of the ball. All right, Chop, quick and to the point there for Noto. You, you feeling the same here about Cards and Seahawks. Yeah, Cardinals, uh, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing on that side that even vaguely interests me. So I'm out on that one. And then uh, on the flip side, I think we saw the Russell Wilson ceiling game last week. It just doesn't get any better than at home against a bad defense that comes down to the last play of the game, basically. That was his ceiling. So, that you know, I don't think he's going to meet that this week, that's for sure. So, I can avoid him. I can actually – I'm really thinking about fading Chris Carson, too, maybe turning turn to Mike Davis because I really don't think they want to use up Chris Carson – uh, in a game like this where, you know, you're, what you can win and lose here is very minimal and the positioning you're in for the playoffs. So I think maybe it's a Mike Davis game, and even that's taken a, you know, a, that's a long shot anyway. So, yeah, this is just not a great game for me to target. So I, I don't know. If, I think there's other, other games on this uh, afternoon slate that I like more. All right, let's stay out west. Let's go to another game here, San Francisco and the Rams. So the Rams right now sitting at the number two spot. They need a win to clinch that number two spot. You know, can still be passed up by Chicago. So with both teams kind of playing at this 4 o'clock slate, you got to imagine the Rams are going to go all out, all out here for that home bye. So the big question here, Chop, Todd Gurley. You know, do they play him? Do they not? We kind of speculate on that. If they do, he's down to 8,600 on DraftKings. Let's say he sits. C.J. Anderson checking in at 5,400 after his big week. Talk about those guys and then obviously the passing game. I have a lot of interest in Goff to his pass catchers. Been much better at home. I think the ownership will be low coming off of some duds here lately for this offense. So I have a lot of interest in the Rams. How about yourself? Yeah, I think I think you hit it. The Rams are going to come out and, and try to lock down this number two seed. So uh, I actually think Gurley probably sits out again. 
Um, I'd, I'd be surprised if he if he suited up and went for a full run here. I'd be I'd be surprised. So I think yeah. And what we saw was Robert Woods be the the main guy who took advantage of Gurley being out. So and I know C.J. Anderson got him a touchdown, and that's all good. But Robert Woods was the focus of the offense. So I could go back to the passing game here with Goff, Woods, Cooks, and even Reynolds, and and uh, that, I'll be fine with that. And on the flip side, I think San Francisco is going to actually come out and. They've got a good head coach. I think they're going to compete in this game. We could turn to Jeff Wilson again. I think he's got a shot at catching a bunch of passes out of the backfield. Uh, with the, the uh, injuries now, uh, Brietta went out, and so did uh, Pettis, who was their leading receiver over the last month. So Goodwin, I think, steps back into a bigger role here. And, of course, George Kittle is always a threat to be the number one tight end. So there's still a lot of weapons for Frisco. I think they're going to push the Rams here just enough to keep those pass catchers for the Rams involved. I like this game quite a bit. Yeah, another guy, Kendrick Bourne, I think is intriguing here. You mentioned the receiver injuries. Pettis is out. Goodwin is questionable. Uh, Bourne's a guy that's been involved and, and can kind of become the number one or one B target, I guess, behind Kittle. But maybe the top receiver in this game, depending on what happens with Goodwin for San Francisco. So another value name, and we'll get a ton of them by the time we get to Sunday. But wanted to get his name out there. Derek, thoughts with Gurley, without Gurley? How are we playing the Rams here? Yeah, so if Gurley plays, I'll probably be avoiding him. I just don't think they need to push him in a game where they're double-digit favorites. I know they want to win, uh, but I just don't see him coming out and getting 30 touches in this one unless he's 100% healthy. And, you know, we're recording this on Wednesday, and he's currently day-to-day, -day, so I doubt he's going to be 100% healthy by Sunday. If he's out, I think C.J. Anderson's a perfectly fine play. Obviously, had the big week, but it was a great matchup against Arizona. Uh, 167 yards on the ground. Don't really expect that again. So I'd probably rather uh, go with the passing game here. A little bit more leverage in terms of ownership, too. Uh, like Goff, and you can pair him up with any three of his receivers. I mean, Reynolds has been uh, getting more targets recently, especially in the red zone. Brandon Cooks, who was quiet last week, but he was kind of getting shadowed by Patrick Peterson. And then, uh, obviously, Robert Woods going to be the safest play of the bunch. So I love this passing game, especially if Gurley ends up being out. And for San, for San Francisco, I agree with you guys, Jeff Wilson at 4,400. Uh, in the last two games where Brita was either hurt or didn't play much, uh, he's had 38 carries and 11 targets. So he's going to be a workhorse in this one. Uh, he's a good pass catching back, which is uh, needed in the game where they're going to be you know, trailing. And then, yeah, just keep an eye on Marquise Goodwin. If he ends up being out, I think Kendrick Bourne becomes probably one of the better value plays of the slate. All right, next game, and this one's interesting. It's intriguing. We have the Chargers going to Denver, but six and a half, seven point favorites here for the Chargers. Currently sitting at the number five seed with an 11 and four record. It just happened to be in the same division as the Chiefs, so that's what happens. But if they win and the Chiefs lose, they can go from five to number one here. So a chance to, to move up here big time for the Chargers. Now, the likelihood of the Chiefs losing at home to Oakland, very, very minimal. But both these teams playing. At the same time, Derek, what do we do here? You know, Anthony Lynn's come out and said, we're going to go. We're going to play. We're, we're going to have everybody go full bore. Do you believe that in this game here against Denver? Yeah, I think we got to believe it. I mean, with the chance to move up, uh, I see no reason for them to sit there, guys, unless uh, – what time is the, the other game? The Chiefs are at the same time, 425. Okay. So, yeah, I think they come out and uh, you know, use all their guys. And did you mention that in the intro? If so, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, good, man. Keep on rolling. So, yeah, I think they come out and uh, play everyone here. I like Melvin Gordon quite a bit in this spot. Uh, he's just a guy that uh, I think they're going to rev up a little bit. You know, only saw 13 touches last week. I think they rev him up a little bit before the playoffs. So they're obviously favored, which is good for a running back. And he's one of the better pass catching backs as well. Keenan Allen sees a nice boost with Chris Harris out for the rest of the year. Uh, I think he had – yeah, pretty good game against them earlier in the year and uh, doesn't have to worry about Harris. So I like those two for the Chargers. And for Denver, we kind of saw Corlin Sutton kind of become the number one wide receiver again. Uh, had that big game against Oakland, uh, caught six or 65 in a touchdown. I'm um, not sure uh, if he's going to be shadowed by Casey Hayward, if you, if you think he is, and maybe look to Deshaun Hamilton in the slot. And then for the running backs, uh, with Philip Lindsay out, I do think you can look at Freeman, only 3,500, probably going to be very popular. Uh, but if he's going to be, you know, at least get all the early work uh, in this offense, and I do think you got to look at him at this price point. And as much as I hate to say this, it pains me because I don't think this dude's a good football player. Devin Booker, 3,200, is going to get some work. He's the passing game guy. I mean, Freeman doesn't do anything in the passing game. So if they're playing from behind, which is what Vegas is indicating, 
Devontae Booker, a guy I think at 3,200, uh, very intriguing here. So, chop questions are Chargers, do we go full bore on them? Do you have any concerns? And then Denver, pick your favorite value pieces because there's a ton of them. Okay, for Denver, I would say, I, well, I'm with you. I don't think, I mean, I'd love for Freeman to be the guy now. I'd love to be able to play him, but this game doesn't set up very well for him. So, Booker would be that guy. Uh, at, you know, painful to say, but, and also Deshaun Hamilton would be my favorite pass catcher on this team. He's, he's, uh, man, he looks almost as good, if not better than Sutton has a better connection with Keenum already. So that's the guy I would look to, but uh, I think it does set up for Denver to be passing quite a bit, but Denver is, I think going to mail this thing in, man, completely. Like they, they fought a little bit in Oakland. They still got beat pretty handily by Oakland, who's not good. And, uh, and this is just the icing on the cake right here. This, I think they'll get run out of this game so quick. And I think L.A. will jump out on top. I think this game's over with by halftime. And, and then, then the Chargers look up at the scoreboard and see the Chiefs are up by three or four touchdowns. And then they call off the dogs. And next thing you know, Rivers, Gordon, Keenan Allen, all these guys are sitting out the second half. So only expect about a half out of L.A. right now. It's, you know. Part of the thing about handicapping these DFS players is you have to figure out a game script of how it's going to go, and you have to go with it. And in my opinion, I don't think we get a full game out of the Chargers. So I don't know if I can invest too much into them. But if I were, I think uh, Keenan Allen is a solid way to go. And uh, I'd probably be my number one guy right there. But you could probably twist my arm into Melvin Gordon, too, to, to break maybe a long one and, and pay off value early. But I really think these guys are out of this game by the third quarter. That's I'm, I'm kind of in your boat here. I'd love to play the Chargers here. Love Melvin Gordon. I think it's a fair price, good matchup, but I just worry that they're going to play the whole game. So, you know, great point. And that, that's what we're doing in week 17. It's not, you know, what are the matchups? It's who's going to play a full game. Uh, who's going to be able to pay off that salary. I think that's the biggest thing. A value play maybe doesn't need four quarters, but when you're paying that kind of money for Melvin Gordon, you need a whole game on him unless he breaks, you know, a long one or two, like you said. So, intriguing keep your ear to the ground you know follow those beat writers i think that's very important this time of year but as of now probably more of a hands-off approach with the chargers next game for us cincinnati and pittsburgh this one very simple guys cincinnati we know is long gone but pittsburgh has to win baltimore has to lose and they play at the same time so pittsburgh is all out i think the only question here is james connor is he going to play or not i don't know that he's ready here I think we get another week of Jalen Samuels, but man, that price is creeping up 6,800 now on DraftKings. So what do we do at Pittsburgh? We saw Antonio Brown finally break out, have that huge game last week. I think he's going to be popular. What do we do there? Is it Juju? Is it Brown? Chop. Yeah, I think I got to go back to Antonio again this week. Uh, Juju. I mean, I still think Juju gets his – well, I guess it's all predicated on no Connor. I'm going to assume no James Connor. If Connor plays, he's got to be healthy, and he'll be one of the top running backs for me for sure in this matchup. But if he doesn't play, Jalen Samuels doesn't interest me a whole lot because he is all the way up to 6,800, like you said now. And he's just not as good as Connor. So I can pass on that. I think it's Antonio and Juju again. Antonio, a lean for me because – Juju's battling a girl and injury. So, but I think it is a pass heavy game here for Pittsburgh. I think they come out and stomp Cincinnati pretty good. Uh, I mean, hopefully Cincinnati puts up some sort of resistance and we can keep the offense on the field for at least three quarters or so. But uh, I like Pittsburgh passing game here more than anything. Cincinnati is a total, total pass to me. I don't see Mixon doing anything in this game. And the receiving core is just absolutely atrocious right now. And so uh, it's all Pittsburgh here. Yeah, Cincinnati's hard to get excited about. I mean, Mixon, okay, but 6,700 in a potential blowout script here. You know Pittsburgh's going to be pedal to the metal. Uh, I can't get too excited about anything on Cincinnati here, Derek. So your thoughts on Cincinnati, anything that stands out to you, and then how are you handling Pittsburgh in this one? For Cincy, only one guy on my radar, and that's C.J. Uzoma. Uh, pretty good matchup against Pittsburgh, who has struggled against uh, tight ends ever since Shazier went down. So – Come on, looking at him uh, as a punt play at tight end. And that's about it for Pittsburgh. Yeah, I agree with you guys. Love, love, love the passing game here, especially if James Conner's out. We saw Juju and Antonio Brown combine for 300 yards and two touchdowns last week alone. Uh, and Pittsburgh, number one in pass play percentage in the NFL. Uh, so if their running back's out, and Samuels, we obviously know, is a better pass catching back than uh, you know downhill runner. So I think this is a great spot for the passing game. All in on Ben and 
you know, I'll pair them up with Brown and Juju uh, throughout my lineups. All right, next game, guys. One of the better games as far as both teams is still being viable here, and that's Chicago and Minnesota. So the Bears can still move up to number two if the Rams were to lose. Minnesota's fighting for their lives. They got to win this game to get into the playoffs. So I think this is a very intriguing game. The problem is it's two very good defenses. So what do we do here? What wins out there, offense or defense? Yeah, it's funny. If you click through the different positions in this game, you'll just see red next to the opponent rank. I mean, they're good against the run. They're good against the pass. Uh, good against tight ends. Pretty much everything. Both these defenses are elite. So, uh, you know, Minnesota playing better over the last few weeks. Don't really want to trust Trubisky on the road. I do think you can look at Terry Cohen. Uh, he's kind of the one guy that we've been able to count on coming off of that dud last week. Maybe they get him going a little bit more. Definitely not a game where I want to, you know, play Jordan Howard and his two-yard runs at a time against this stout defense. So pretty much just Cohen on the one side. And then for Minnesota, maybe this is finally the game that Thielen gets going uh, a little bit. You know, had a decent week, but only saw six targets uh, last week against the Lions. So in a game that they got to win, maybe uh, they get him going a little bit. But for a game that means so much, I have very little interest in it. Oh, that's my problem, Blake, man. This this one could have a lot of plays out of it, but I'm struggling to find anybody. So – you know, I don't mind taking shots on, on Thielen Diggs. You know, their prices have come down, 74 and 7K on DraftKings. I, I like the Cohen call, but that's probably it for me. I don't, even, I don't think I can even play the quarterbacks here. So, Chop, any more interest here for you offensively, Bears and Vikings? Not for Chicago. I don't, uh, I don't have any interest in Chicago playing on the road against a pretty tough defense. So, I can pass on Chicago. But, and I mean, like Derek, maybe, maybe Cohen would be my – the guy I'd have the most interest in, but he's definitely not a priority. But I'm actually pretty interested in the Miami or the Minnesota connection there with Cousins, Thielen, and Diggs. I think Dalvin Cook is a threat now, enough of a threat to to make the Chicago Bears think twice about, you know, putting guy, extra guys in the box. So I think they can attack them. It's a must win for Minnesota. I mean, it's, more, it's obviously more of a must win for Minnesota than Chicago. They've got – They've got everything on the line here if you're Minnesota. So I think they've definitely fully come out engaged in this game and with a with a big game plan from the very beginning. And I think that game plan is Cousins to Diggs and Cousins to Thielen. I like double stacking Cousins this week quite a bit with so much on the line back at home against a defense that may be looking forward to the playoffs. I definitely like I definitely like that three headed connection right there. All right, let's move on. Oakland and Kansas City, the next one up for us here. So Kansas City, very simple. When you get home field throughout the playoffs and at home against Oakland, you, you got to like their chances in that one. Now, I look at the spread, and I, I thought it would be a little bit higher here, Chop. I'm seeing 14, 13 and a half, 14 and a half, but I was thinking more like 17, 18. I know Oakland been competitive lately. You know, they've been winning games. They've been fighting. But in Kansas City, I, I have a hard time getting too excited about the Raiders. So big question is the Chiefs. Do, do we just hammer our Chiefs and hope Oakland stays competitive? Or maybe the Chiefs have 40 points at halftime and we and we pay off those prices. But I think Kansas City, one of the keys to this slate, what's your what's your thoughts here? How are you handling the Chiefs? Well, uh yeah, I, I like I like I like a lot of Chiefs. I like going in on the Chiefs and I'm gonna play the uh hammer aspect. They're gonna hammer them and put up enough points before they leave the game that you're not even worried about not getting a full set of snaps from them. Oakland's actually – one thing you say about them is they've actually tried to compete, man, yeah. late in the season. They're, they're not giving up. But I do think they uh, had their uh, their Super Bowl on Monday night, you know, national game on Monday night football, last game in Oakland probably. So I think that was the, the big crescendo for their season. I don't, I don't think that they're going to uh, – be able to control Kansas City here in any way, shape, or form. So I think Mahomes tears it up. Tyreek Hill, Kelsey, they all get theirs before they leave this game. Or maybe they run it, run, run out the clock in the second half. But before they even start doing that, I fully expect Mahomes to get his four, maybe even five touchdowns in this game. So I definitely don't like the Raiders offense, don't like those pieces, but I love all these Kansas City pieces. And, and uh, just, you know, the news – I'm a news guy, so I'm just I'm hearing James Conner had a full practice this today, so maybe James Conner's back from Pittsburgh too. There you go. That could be intriguing. I mean, that I mean, home favorites. Do they give him a ton of work though, coming off an injury? But in a must win, and maybe they lean heavily on him. So that is a big piece of news. Keep an eye on that one, Derek. Your thoughts here, Chiefs and Raiders. 
Yeah, this one's tough. I fully expect KC to come out, build a big lead, uh, and then who knows what they do after that, uh, whether they just uh, rest their guys or, you know, give more work to Damian Williams. Um, but we'll see. Either way, I think uh, Williams is viable if Ware ends up being out again. He's been, you know, an awesome uh, you know, plug and play the last two weeks, 30 and 29 fantasy points, now gets the Raiders at home. So I think he's fine um, in all formats if Ware ends up being out. And then definitely like Kelsey, too. We've been targeting – tight ends against Oakland for years and years and no reason for him not to have a big game in this one even if it does turn ugly like we like Todd mentioned he'll probably get his before uh it gets to that point don't mind going to Mahomes and Tyreek Hill but probably large field tournament plays for me and then for Oakland I know uh probably not gonna have a ton of exposure but Jalen Richard's always interesting in a game where they're gonna be trailing uh he's probably gonna see you know five plus targets in this one and most of the second half work if they are losing by a lot yeah, Damian Williams, one of my favorite plays on the slate, especially over on Yahoo. He's only 19 bucks, and DraftKings bumped him up a little bit, up to 6,100. Yahoo, he only got a $1 bump. So uh, I think the way this guy's been playing, like I said, if wears out, uh, I think it's full systems go here with the Chiefs. But I like the value on, on Damian Williams a lot over on Yahoo. All right, a couple games left here in the 4 o'clock slate, and then we'll talk Sunday night football, and then we'll get out of here for week 17. So next one for us. Cleveland and Baltimore, and this is another one, should be a lot of fun. You know, the Ravens, you know, they're, they're still very much in the mix, could move around a ton here in the AFC playoff scenarios. The Browns, this is their playoff game. You know, they want to win this game. So Ravens have to win. The Browns want to spoil that season. This is intriguing, Derek. So thoughts, though, because it's another one. You know, Cleveland's offense has been great. Baltimore's defense has been the best in the league. So which one gives here? For fantasy, I'm not sure I want to target much of this game, but uh, I'm definitely cheering for Cleveland in this one. It's not that I don't like, uh, you know, Jackson and Baltimore, but I would much rather see the Steelers get into the playoffs. Uh, just better for fantasy, better to watch. Uh, I think they actually have a chance to make it to the Super Bowl. Uh, I don't think the Ravens necessarily get there. So I'm actually cheering for Cleveland in this one. Uh, but for fantasy, yeah, not a ton to like. I don't really want to play. Uh, Baker on the road against this tough defense. Chubb, not a great game script for him as underdogs. Uh, and then on Baltimore side, you can maybe play Lamar. I mean, he's got a really high floor given his uh, rushing ability, but he hasn't really shown us his ceiling. He's tapped out at 22 fantasy points this season. And at this price point, uh, in a slate, we're probably going to be high scoring. I think we need a little bit more than you know, 18 to 20 fantasy points uh, at this price point. So not a lot of interest, but uh, I will be watching this game closely. Yeah, it's kind, of the, it's, kind of, it's kind of the route I'm taking. should be a fun football game to watch, but DFS-wise, I'm not finding much here. Even a guy like Gus Edwards as a, as a home favorite, just not a lot of upside you know, in the old Gus bus. So, Chop, your thoughts? Any more optimism here than, than Noto and I seem to have? You know, hot take of the week. Cleveland upsets them. Yeah. Nice. Upsets the apple cart here. I, I said – I mentioned earlier I like a couple of teams that – aren't necessarily playing for anything, playing against teams that are playing for something I, I, that can keep keep competitive. And Cleveland's definitely one of them. I think they can pull the upset here. So I'm, I'm going to go Cleveland for the upset. Doesn't really translate to fantasy, though. I, if, I, if anybody, maybe Jarvis Landry fits the mold of a guy who can beat Baltimore a little bit on offense. Njoku could do it, too. I mean, he's a big, big athletic tight end. So maybe that's the way to go. But I think Baker can string together enough offense in this game uh, I think he could do better than Lamar Jackson's going to do. I think he's going to score some points. And the defense for Cleveland is, is a little bit underrated. So, I think they could really uh, hold down Lamar in this running game. There is no passing game in Baltimore. I mean, it's, it's a great running game. but it's, And it's not as though, you know, they've just been running and they haven't needed to pass. And so, he hasn't even had a chance to. It's because every time he's tried, he's been so bad at passing Lamar Jackson. So there's no passing game. So Cleveland focuses on this running attack. I think they pull the upset. I don't have a lot of interest in the Baltimore offense. It's a one-man show. It's Lamar running the ball and a handoff every once in a while. So, you know, I don't have any interest fantasy-wise, but I think Cleveland pulls the upset. All right, last game for us on the main slate on DraftKings and FanDuel of Philadelphia and Washington. This one, not as many implications, but – Philadelphia, as of now, outside looking in, they need to win. They need Minnesota to lose to find a way in. So Philadelphia is our, our main target here, obviously, the team with something to play for. Now, last week was the Foles and Ertz show, Chop. I mean, these two guys lit it up. Prices have gone up. I'm even starting to hear Nick Foles is our quarterback of the future. When people are just pushing Carson Wentz aside. So 
Talk about that if you want to. Quarterbacks being replaceable. But as far as this game goes, where's the interest level in Philly? Do we just go back to Foles and Hurts? Uh, we saw Sproles have a big game. Uh, who is it for Philadelphia and in Washington? Do they put up a fight here? Do, do they spoil their division rival season? Washington, no, I don't. I don't. I think they're pretty much uh, done. They, you know, they they fought hard last week, especially. But I just, I think that's it for them. They're going to mail it in in this game. So, uh, yeah, I turned my attention to Philly here. And my 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 first instinct when I saw this game was Josh Adams. That's the one. That's the name that jumped off to me, Josh Adams, because Washington, I don't think, is very competitive here. And I think uh, Josh Adams gets it going. Uh, you could talk me into Zach Ertz and Alshon Jeffrey again, but uh, I think Josh Adams is going to have the big game here, and I don't have any interest in Washington. All right, Derek, your thoughts here. Wrap us up here on DraftKings and FanDuel, Philadelphia and Washington. Not a lot of interest in the Redskins, although if Reed and Vernon Davis are both ruled out again, we could maybe look at Jeremy Sprinkle. He's only 2,700 on DraftKings. We're basically looking to punt the position more times than not, and uh, it's just been a wasteland uh, at tight end. So if you need a real punt, don't mind Sprinkle there. For Philly, yeah, all the guys Chop mentioned are in play. Uh, it does set up well for Josh Adams. Uh, I typically like my running backs to be a little bit more involved in the passing game, but this is a spot where he could get a couple touchdowns against a beatable run defense. Uh, we know Alshon has a really good uh, track record with Nick Foles, as does Nelson Aguilar, who had the big game last week. Um, if uh, – if they end up shadowing uh, Jeffrey, um, then maybe you want to look to Aguilar. But I think that's kind of chasing the point. So I'll probably just go to Ertz uh, in tournaments and call it there. If you want to just get some exposure to the Philly offense without, you know, picking any of the pass catchers, maybe just play Foles naked and uh, just hope he goes off again after that big game last week. All right, last game of the week. And the NFL always does a good job of this. There always seems to be a, a win or go home game. And we certainly have that here again this season. With Tennessee and Indy, you win and you're in, you lose and you go home. Very simple here. So, Yahoo, this is available on the main slate. DraftKings, obviously, will be a showdown slate. We don't have those prices. So, we'll focus on the game and on some Yahoo pricing. So, story of this one, Derek, Marcus Mariota. You know, as of this recording on Wednesday, did not practice today, wants to play, plans on playing, but we can't always trust the player. So, I guess attack it from both sides with Mariota, with playing Gabbert interest level in Tennessee and then the Colts we know that we know the guys it's Mac it's Luck it's Ebron it's Hilton which one stands out to you there yeah whether or not Mariota plays Tennessee is going to want to take the air out of the football in this one they're going to want to lean on Derrick Henry and that's exactly what I think we should do for uh, fantasy purposes at least for the Titans um, they're going to give him as many carries as he can get especially if they're playing with the lead or uh, anything close to it because uh, even if Mariota is active He's obviously not 100%, and if Gabbard's the quarterback, you definitely don't want him airing it out. If I had to choose a pass catcher, I'd probably go with Corey Davis. Uh, don't mind the spot for him. And then for Indy, yeah, pretty much all the guys uh, in play here. We got Luck, we got Hilton, we got Ebron. Um, going to be my favorite guys. Probably not going to be looking at Marlon Mack um, you know, on the road, but yeah, a lot to like here. Maybe Naheem Hines is a sneaky uh, tournament play in that showdown on slate. All right, Chop, wrap us up here for Week 17, Colts and Titans. And we lost Chop. <laughs> Chop, you got that mute button on? Hey, my bad, man. There I was, uh, <laughs> I was up, sitting there talking to him. I was wondering why you were laughing at my joke a minute ago. <laughs> we, we all, we've all done it. Don't, don't feel bad. Well, I didn't want—I didn't want you to hear me typing. I was trying to send the PayPal to this uh, fantasy football thing this year. So these guys, these guys are there's aren't on my ass for the PayPal already, man. We'll get into that in a minute, though. But uh, Indianapolis, Tennessee playoff game. Yeah, it looks fun, man. Uh, I actually think Indianapolis pulls off the win here on the road with or without Mariota. I think Mariota, even if he plays, is probably a little bit dinged up. But even if he was healthy, even if he had never left that game last week against Washington, I would still lean towards luck in Indianapolis this week. I just think they're a slightly better team. So I think it's, uh, I think it's Andrew Luck. I think it's T.Y. Hilton. And those are the guys I would expect. You know, I got to wait on some injuries on some of the – I want to know uh, the offensive line status for Indianapolis. If they're 100% healthy, I could I could maybe be uh, back to Marlon Mack, even though he really let me down last week. And then on the flip side, I really don't have a lot of interest in Tennessee. Indianapolis keeps, keeps everything in front of them pretty good, so that's not good for Corey Davis. I don't really want these check down guys like Taiwan Taylor, uh, Derrick Henry, you know. 
he had his nice two games, but I just don't think – I think Indianapolis is smart enough not to let him get loose. And they do a good job against running backs anyway. So I don't have a lot of interest in Tennessee here. Uh, it's mainly Indianapolis, I think, to pull the upset, and I think it's via Luck and Hilton. All right. That'll wrap us up, not only for week 17, but for the regular season, guys. So it's been a long road here. Still waiting to see if we'll have some playoff shows. So we'll, maybe we'll have that answer here soon. But, guys, let's talk any final thoughts here on the week, on the season, maybe some hot takes. Top, let's start with your season long. What, what, what's going on there? You talked about the toilet bowl, got some PayPal <laughs> money going out, so I'm assuming things didn't go so well in the toilet bowl. <laughs> well, I have to say I made a really nice run at the end of the year while I didn't even recognize it. I made a nice run in the toilet bowl and got to the championship, and believe it or not, on Sunday night, the, uh, the Patrick Mahomes 20-yard scramble in the fourth quarter on that last drive pushed my opponent over me by a point one one or like 1.1 points he had a 20 yard run his last gain of the night and i got beat by a point for the toilet bowl so yes i owe money so yes as of <laughs> right now i am in paypal right now typing in this guy's address and i owe him 300 dollars. The, the note is always i got it it's a yearly thing here whoever gets my money get 300 dollars for 300 blowjobs that's the little note on it that's what i like to leave and i'm gonna push that right there that's going so that's done man i can't believe it i i made a run but i lost but it's all good i'll bounce back next year i'm, I'm okay with it all right any final thoughts here for week 17 hot takes well, you already had one cleveland cleveland wins the game you, you bring in any other fire here uh no it is what it is i mean week 17 uh, we've been through this before it's it, and it's a shit show that can get out of hand if you're not paying attention. And even if you are, it can still get out of hand. I certainly, I'm certainly not going uh, overboard in how much, how much I'm playing because even if you, even if you're right on some of this stuff, you're bound to be wrong on some of it too. So I don't think it's a full week for me, but we got the big Yahoo thing yep. in weeks again. So I'm definitely playing that. I'll, I'll, I'll lock in the full lineups on that, all 10 of them. Uh, and take it easy on the other sites a little bit, kind of ease back on them. But it was a fun season. It was a good season. It had its streaks. You know, uh, I started off real well in the end. I, I, at the beginning, I had a rough middle, but I ended pretty well. Hopefully I can continue that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it, it kind of caught me off guard this year, to be honest with you. I was sitting here in late August looking at the same stuff, thinking – just DraftKings, that's all I got, and just NFL. And all of a sudden, I got this little note coming in in the last week of August saying not only did I have FanDuel back, I had college football. So I had to adjust everything. I, I fully expect to be a little bit more prepared for it next year. And uh, I, think, I think it was a fun year, but I can't wait till next year already, man. I hear you, man. It, it did change a lot there with college football being back. So – Threw a wrench in a, into things, but same for me. You know, up and down season, some good weeks, some bad weeks, but that's going to happen. You know, you're not going to win every single week as long as you stay consistent. You'll stick with the process, as they like to say. Uh, I think that's the key. But been a lot of fun. Always love doing these shows with you guys. But breaking news, we are not done here on the DFS OGs podcast. We'll be back for two weeks of playoffs. We'll cover the wild card round and the divisional round for you. So that just, just broke as we speak. So – we're not done, boys. Two more weeks of podcast. Derek, final thoughts to wrap us up here. I can't say for the season, but for week 17, any hot takes coming out of your direction? Yeah, well, I was about to give a heartfelt goodbye to you two. Uh, but Hang now on I don't have it. Hang on to it. <laughs> two more weeks. Uh, yeah, week 17 is always fun. I think it's a great week to build multiple lineups rather than just building one. And, uh, you know, one of these games doesn't go your way and you're pretty much uh, dead. So it's a great week to build multiple lineups. Definitely take advantage of the overlay on Yahoo. I've been doing that each of the last two weeks and uh, you guys should be doing that as well. And yeah, it's just been a lot of fun. Hasn't been my most profitable NFL year so far, but uh, still a few weeks to go and I'm excited for it. That's right. Still time to make that money, but I can't echo the Yahoo thing enough, guys. If you're playing, that's just free money. You have to take advantage of it. Support them, yes, but free money is free money, and we all love that overlay. So 10 lineups apiece, whether you're playing one or all 10, I think it makes sense. If you're playing any money in NFL this weekend, you can get over and play at Yahoo. So that'll wrap us up for Week 17, but again, we'll be back next week. Just one part 
for the playoffs. We'll cover the games. We'll have some fun with it. You know, we'll tell some stories, make some jokes. You know how we roll. So looking forward to that. But week 17 should be fun for my boys. Notorious head chopper. I am beer saying salut. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Good luck here in week 17. And we'll see you back here for the playoffs right here on the DFS OG's podcast on rotogrinders.com. We'll see you guys.